Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 5. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 4 of Book 5. But before we begin, I'd like to go over some definitions from Euclid. The first definition, as translated by Heath, states that a ratio is a sort of a relation in respect of a size between two magnitudes of the same kind. This basically means that if you want to compare the number of apples to oranges and have a ratio, the same kind is that they're both fruit. But you cannot have a ratio between the number of apples and the distance to Mars. Now magnitudes are to said to have a ratio, in other words a ratio can exist between two magnitudes, if and only if there exists a number p such that if you multiply it by the first part of the ratio it will be larger than the second, and another number q such that if you multiply it by the second half of the ratio it will be larger than the first. And the purpose of this definition is just to make clear that we cannot compare infinitesimal numbers to regular numbers, nor can we compare infinite numbers to regular numbers. So this just keeps us within the realm of normal numbers, not including the infinitely large or the infinitely small. Now the most important definition here is definition number five. This is very important, so I'm going to take some time to go through it. The ratio a to b is equal to c to d. So how do we define when two ratios are equal? Well, according to Euclid's definition, we define them to be equal if the following things are true. We pick two numbers, p and q, at random. If p multiplied by a is greater than q times b, then it implies for any p and q where this is true, that also p times c would be greater than q times d. Now this may be true for a specific p and q, but it has to be true for all numbers p and q. Similarly, for all numbers p and q, if p times a is less than q times b, then also p times c is less than q times d, and similarly equal equal. Now this is a long definition. So since I have to write this over and over again during the proofs, this is the more standard way of writing it. Hold on a moment. So this statement here is essentially the equivalent of these four statements above. It says that p times a, if p times a is greater than q times b, p times c is also greater than q times d. If p times a is equal to q times b, that implies that p times c is equal to q times d, and so on and so forth. So, in short, this is what definition 5 is referring to. And I probably should not have written the word if, It's, if this holds true, then by definition, a to b is equal to c to d. All right, now this definition is used over and over again. It's very important. If you're having trouble understanding the definition, what I suggest is you take two ratios that are equal, and then start playing around with different numbers, p and q, and see how it works. Then take two numbers a and b, or two ratios a to b and c to d that you know are not equal, and then see if you can find a p and q that breaks the rule. And that will give you a better feel for what this means. Now I'm going to assume that you have a good understanding of what this means before I carry on. If you don't, pause the video, play around with some numbers, and then continue on once you understand or have a grasp of what this all means. Now again, this is a definition. It does not require a proof. It is stating that if this condition holds true, that is the definition of the equality. 
So let's get on to our proposition. We start off with two ratios, A to B, C to D, that are equal. And I wrote this down here because we'll need it later on. But again, remember, by stating that these two are equal, we're basically stating this fact. We have two other ratios, or sorry, two other lines, E and F. They're equal multiples of A and C, respectively. We have G and H, which are equal multiples of B and D, respectively. What this is saying is that E to G, the ratio E to G, will be the same as the ratio F to H. Or if we were to write it algebraically, if A to B is equal to C to D, then I to A to J of B will also equal I to C to J to D, J times D. So let's get forward with our proof. Here are our starting conditions. So we're going to draw two new lines, K and L, so that they are equal multiples of E and F, respectively. And we'll draw two new lines, M and N, that are equal multiples of G and H, respectively. Now if we look at these three equations, E and F are equal multiples of A and C, K and L are equal multiples of E, and F respectively, which means, according to Proposition 3, that K and L are also equal multiples of A and C. So here we have K and L are equal multiples of A and C. Similarly, we can show that M and N are equal multiples of B and D. Well, PA is equal to K. QB is equal to M. PC is equal to L. And QD is equal to N. So we have this relationship that comes about because A to B is equal to C, D, D, C to D. And this is the definition of the equality. But K is equal to ME. M is equal to NG, L is equal to MF, and N is to NH. So I've just rewritten the relationships. Well, ME to NG, MF to NH, this shouldn't have been grayed out, but it is, we'll live with it, implies that E is to G as F is to H. So here we have shown that if A to B is equal to C to D, E, F are equal multiples of A and C, G equal multiples of B as H is an equal multiple of D. If these conditions are true, then E to G, the ratio of E to G, is equal to the ratio F to H. And that concludes this video presentation. To see the next presentation, just click the next button.